I wouldn't say that TV is dead. I think that's a, a bit of an overstatement. They've, they've got issues. They've got challenges to transition and as consumers migrate their behavior, in particular to mobile, whether it be mobile devices or in particular mobile tablets. You know, I think Nielsen about a year and a half ago called that um, there was more viewing on tablets within master bedrooms than on large screen TVs. So that's a pretty big shift, you know, in people's consumer behavior change. And they're not going to accept that kind of commercial advertising activity that they've accepted in, in you know, what we'll call big screen wall based, I guess. I don't know how we define all that today. So it's in a transition. Is mobile truly reaping the benefits of that transition? You know, I don't think mobile is yet. And, you know, it's interesting. We saw it today here on stage with, you know, in the reflections. I, you know, I, I asked some pretty standard questions most of the time I speak. And one was how many of you believe that mobile is a top three uh, agenda? You know, one of the top three things that you as a marketing department should be focused on. And everybody's hand goes up. And then I usually ask, you know, how many of you think that you're executing successfully against that? And uh, I'll get maybe one or two hands, virtually none. And, and I know what markers are doing, and I know what the research says. You know, the research that we released through our SMOC studies, the SMOX SMOC studies, is that a marketer should be spending upwards of 15 to 20 percent of total spend in mobile today. That would be the optimized, and that's a law of physics kind of thing. You don't get to violate that. It's just, you know, listen, you can do something else, but your marketing mix will be less effective. And so on a pound per pound, dollar per pound basis, you know, mobile deserves a role much bigger than where it is. Most brands are around three to five percent today. So, you know, this stuff unfortunately takes time, except for the few who see real competitive advantage and jump on it and go after it. So I think that will start to, you know, cut into TV, but I, I don't think we're seeing it yet, Ty. I, you know, I don't know. I've been doing, like you said, I've been doing digital now for 20 years. Uh, I've been waiting for that, for that point. I think we're close. So I think if the question is, you know, do we believe that mobile's both personalization and then somewhat as a result of that, the ability to really target messaging to consumers, be, I guess in some regards, how you might be saying is that the biggest thing that could ever happen for mobile? And I think at some level, yes, but you know, I've also been around this long enough to know that that takes time for a brand to create the processes and the systems and the technology and the platforms in order to be able to serve individually message. I mean, they're really just not oriented to that. You know, you even had, uh, you know, Walmart did something really radical a number of years ago, and they announced on stage, talked about this quite publicly, that they had produced 1,500 television commercials. That's revolutionary. But we're now talking about them having an ability to go to 10,000 messages or 100,000, I don't know what the number of messages is, and they're really, you know, and, and no marketers really prepared to do that. Now, what's interesting though, and this is the thing that kind of gets lost, is not sort of, I can look at it not, um, will the whole industry get there anytime soon? I tend to look, who are the breakaway stars that are gonna see the competitive advantage? You know, I gave this quote on stage, I, I love this phrase, I stumbled across from Jack Welch, which is that there's only two, point, two, two ways to competitive advantage. One, you know your consumer is better than your competition, and two, you act against that insight better than your competition does. And so mobile is a consumer insight. You're, you're never going to see, you may never see as great a change, ah, let me put it differently. There has never been so much change in consumer behavior as mobile has now suggested. I mean, my twin daughters, 15-year-old twin daughters, right, teenagers, they've never read a magazine. I brought them home, they sit. They've never read a newspaper, oh my God, wouldn't even, I don't think they know what the damn thing looks like, aside from what gets lined in the bunny cage. They certainly, uh, they don't watch, they all have big screen TVs in the room, they don't watch them anymore, they're all watched either on their device as a complement to their, uh, to their, to their PC, you know, or Mac, and, or they're watching it directly on the Mac, and that's how they experience entertainment today. So, you know, I don't know, it's all, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, well, who was it who said back in the beginning of Digital says, we will underestimate its importance early on, but we will uh, over, we see, we overestimate its importance early on, but we underestimate the speed at which it will happen. Uh, and so, right, isn't that what, how it went, yeah. So clearly I think we're in that. I think that, um, and I do feel like those things are moving more quickly. So somebody's got to build the platform and the systems to really make that possible for marketers to take advantage of it. And I think when they do, then you will see the big shift. So I, I'm looking for, you know, who is that next, you know, media marketing unicorn? You know, the, the, the Google, Facebook, you know, there, there's somebody else who may come along and solve that problem at real scale.